the wildest thing that happened in my agency was we had this couple that just got engaged and they were insuring this ring for six hundred thousand dollars within the first month. I know, right? And they lost it. So I'm they lost to, it. <laughs> I know, like how? Right. So I told a lot of people they're like, what does it look like? And I said, Yeah, it looked like a condo in Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I mean <laughs> What I don't think people lose it. But you go, Mr. Jason. We're already stepping on each other. Uh, I know. <laughs> but what does it 600,000? I mean, that's a good question. What does that look like? Super beautiful. But I had a ton of people who were like, I have one of those medical, you know, detect- where do they live? I have a medical detector. I'm coming up. I'm looking. Like, so was, you know, <laughs> yeah. Super beautiful. I mean, <laughs> yeah. I don't even understand how that, that's crazy. Yeah. So anyhow, I'm Christine Angles with the Christine Angles Insurance Agency. Super like exciting name. And I'm an insurance dudette. Insurance dudes are on a mission to escape being handcuffed by our agencies. How? By uncovering the secrets to creating a predictable, consistent, and profitable agency sales machine. I am Craig Pretzinger. I am Jason Feldman. We are agents. We are insurance dudes. Right now, while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. We took our notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies led Craig and I to selling more than $10 in premium in the last two years. On this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the same results. Just go to live.teledudes.com. Dot com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. If you jump on this call with us, we're certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there. Well, All well right. welcome. Yes. <laughs> well, welcome to the podcast. It's so great to have you here. Thank you. We love having the insurance dudettes on the podcast. That's for sure. Happy yes. to be here. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Well, why don't you kind of just take us back and, and let us know, how, how did you get into this crazy insurance business? Was it something that you wanted to do from a little girl or, or oh, was sure. this, how did you get into it? All right. Good question. So no, nothing really super normal. Um, my son's basketball coach was an insurance agent and he said, Hey, um, there's an insurance agency for sale. You should buy it. And then within six weeks, I was like an insurance agent. So it was crazy. So I had been a software developer. Then I was an at-home mom. And the coach said, try it. And I did it. That was nine and a half years ago. And it's been super great. Wow. That is so so (laughs) crazy how you just jumped into it like that. Yeah. It was a little crazy. In the first weekend, they had like, we had like a derecho storm, like crazy storm here. First weekend we opened, I had no power in my house. And like everyone's calling with claims, like, you know, it was a terrible time. Everyone was claims, claims, and everything. So the start couldn't have been any worse, to be honest. Like for the first week, it was terrible, and now it's been great. But well, yeah, uh, it's always tough getting in because you're trying to figure out what the heck to do, and then you're like, "Wait, I'm just doing service and, and right. paying out money." Yay. Yeah. No, but it was just like you know, you want to feel responsible and take care of everyone. So sure. we were just um, yep. we were just a little not prepared for that. I mean, it all worked out. We got it handled, but it was it was stressful. Yeah. yeah. What was going on at that point where you were just like, I'm just, yeah, I'll just buy it. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, it was, it just happened to be the right time. You know, when things happen, um, my kids were getting older, was ready to kind of go back to work, but software development, I think changes. I hadn't been worked in 12 years, to be honest. So everything I'd been a VP of software development and every, everything changed. All the whole technology changed. And so I'm like, what am I going to do? And this just kind of, I was like, you know what I need? I used to call it like a, a job that just falls in my lap. Something just like happens and then I just happen to go into it. And nice. honestly, that's that's how it worked. It was just I think, the flexibility of owning your own business. You know, you guys are insurance agents, you know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yep. And, and let's be honest, there's really no no room for advancement in the software technology ind- industry. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> but I was like, oh, you know, but that's not old. But see, by that point, like, Everything that I knew was irrelevant. Yeah. yeah. Like there were no iPhones. You know what I mean? When I stopped, you right. know what I mean? Like it was, so, it was totally yeah. different. You were programming in Cobalt. <laughs> Literally. 
<laughs> well, that's great. So, so take us back to your earliest win in the agency and that kind of set the tone and, and created that fuel for you to, to make it happen. Like, yeah, I think that, so I started in July. First half year was kind of a wash, just pulling together. The second year, you know, we won like big award, chairman's conference, national award. And since then, you know, like you kind of get used to it. You, you get kind of a thrill of being someone who achieves, who wins awards, who does that. And then we just started doing it from then on. So I think that first, you know, the first year that we did it just became the way it's done. Cool. That's really great. So just like your first year you hit awards and you were already crushing it. No, the first half. So I started like mid-year, mid-year. Right. So right. first half year, first half year, nothing, okay. you know, just kind of pulling together, handling the derecho, trying to like live. And then the, the first full year as an agency, Oh, I gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So that first full year, you know, we kind of got into a groove, hired enough people, told enough, got used to everything and how many people we needed to have and what roles and then got things going. Yeah. You got a taste for the taste for the bonus. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. What did you start off with, with your, your staff? Like, what were you, you said you, when you were staffing right then, what were you looking for as far as like, uh, as far as your staff? I think at the time we might have only had like two staff and then hired someone for sales. I think also the thing is of having someone who was taking that risk of hiring someone that you think, oh, I don't know if I can afford, then you realize you can't not afford to have them. <laughs> right. Have, right. You know, you, know, you have yep. to have someone who's doing sales and you have to make that investment or it's not going to work. That is one of the first like epiphanies, right? You're like, I, I need to grow. I need to grow. And so you're trying to get everybody to, to sell. And then you're like, wait a minute. Like I need a salesperson, but I can't really afford a salesperson. But if I don't get a salesperson, I, I'm not going to be able to sell. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. So and different personalities too, realizing that, you know, there's different personalities you need on your team, people who want to care for people and take care and then someone who's going to, you know, bring the energy and feel okay calling people and calling people. So just different personalities and having that mix. Yeah. yeah. There's this awesome agent. I think he was, I think his name is Mike in like Colorado. He did a presentation. He called the, the service agents, the wardens and the uh, salespeople, the inmates. And the wardens always yeah. kept the inmates in line. I thought that was, <laughs> to this day, I'm like, that's, ex- that is so true. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, it's funny here. So, what does your it, team it, um, look like now? Like, well, and and how's that evolved? How their roles evolved and and the positions? So we've changed a bit in the last couple of years, but right now I have six people. I just hired someone to start Monday, so I have two people who are like primarily sales, and then I have two people who are primarily service, and one you know person is like kind of half and half. So, and I just hired a new salesperson, so should be about half and half in terms of make up the team. And then myself, I also realized too, I think it took me a while to realize, you know what, just sell some stuff yourself. Uh-huh. <laughs> and yeah. So you're still in the trenches. You're, you're making sales also. I like being in the trenches. Yeah. Not a lot, but you know, I think it's good for, I think it's good for everyone. I think it's just good. It keeps me fresh and knowing what people are hearing and doing and yep. making that little thrill. So why not? Yeah. So it sounds like you've created a really good culture there at the agency. What kind of things did you do to do that? Did you do to create that awesome culture? This is really, this is actually, this is kind of probably my funniest story. I like this one a lot. I hired someone who looked really good on paper and then she told me she didn't like me. And I was like, Oh, that's kind of a problem. But <laughs> um, you know, right. <laughs> it's a small office, but she said, well, you're like work, work, work. And then get up and dance. Like you're at Mardi Gras. And I said, exactly. <laughs> and then that became our motto. Like, so if I interviewed someone, I said, how do you feel about the idea that I'd like you to work, 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 and then get up and dance like you're at Mardi Gras? And they're like, yes. And I'm like, you're in. You know? <laughs> so and that's, our, that's kind of like, yeah, I think that's good. I mean, that's, that's how we run things. <laughs> I, I love that. I love the polarity. And, and isn't it funny, like the clarity of knowing exactly like the way we are and the, like our culture in the way we operate and, and just letting people know, like here, here, here's some things you might not like. Here's some things that you might like. And it's almost like you let the person self-select, like, yeah, I want to be a part of it. Right. Like if that's what you like and, and that's who I am, then that's fine. Right. Exactly. And then embrace right. it and everyone loves it. 
Yeah, love that. So how do you recruit for your agency? I was thinking about that recently, and we've really kind of grown in, in a very haphazard manner. I have found people like I was re, we, I was restaffing, and I hired one of my oldest closest friends, so that was great. I had a friend who'd never been in done insurance, um, but she's a great personality and is a doer. You know, so I said I said you could do this. She said, "How can I do this?" I'm like, "You can do this." So I hired her, and that so you know that was great. We're like, "Oh, the dream team, that's awesome." And then, I, you know, so I've hired someone I found in Indeed, someone I found through a friend, someone found me. So I wish I could say I use this particular process and I use a particular tool. I don't. It's kind of, not Indeed, actually, I'm sorry, I should say LinkedIn. That was a surprising way yeah. to find someone. And I, I, would, I would do that again. So I guess the strategy is there's a lot of lines in the, in the lake and, and you're always fishing. Yeah, like I think that you hire right based on um, opportunity. Like if someone yeah. is, you know, I think you have to be open to if someone seems great to see if you can put them in the team. Um, yeah, yeah, that a hundred percent. I think that where a lot of agents run into trouble, and it's happened to me, and I know it's happened to Jason, it happens to everybody, mm -hmm. is if you're not always looking, then you end up at some point. We all know that they're going to leave. And when they do, if if we look when we need, then we're in trouble, right? Because now we only have a very small subset of who's available. Like the, the perfect hire is not available at the moment that we need them. And I think that that's a, a really good strategy you have. Yeah. And it takes a while too to get someone like up and running and doing things too. So I think yes. you forget. You're like, oh, I'll hire someone in April. And then really it's going to take a couple of months yeah, to get up right. and running. Yeah. So haphazard. A little bit on the actual process, but I know that you likely are not haphazard on this piece, which is bringing that new person on after you've hired them. What kind of things do you do to ensure that they're successful when, when they start? Sure. And then I also should say too, like I also added on like a, a lot of written communication. I realize that I, we do a lot of emailing. So I realize I should, besides just talking, I added that as part of my hiring process to make sure that someone's going to be communicating with someone well that way. I just, I have hired someone Monday, I have a big checklist of here's all the things that you need to do and know how to do. And, you know, just working through that. And so we do a lot of shadowing back and forth, work the checklist, which is a series of you know different things, learn this, know how to do this, get signed into agency zoom, get signed into this. So a lot of not haphazard, but the whole collection of all the haphazard things that we all have to know. Mm, that's awesome. Yeah. I love that. What would you say, so you bring people on, mm -hmm. what would you say is like your most effective training tip? Like, where do you think you excel in, in your training? Well, I have a lot of things that documented. So we have a lot of things a, that are, um, you know, documents like here's tips on how to do this, where I've done screenshots and stuff so people can refer to that. Uh, I also have a few people working remotely. I work remotely half the time. Some people work remotely full time and we use Zoom and the screen share all the time. So the screen share on Zoom and let me show you what I do is really an important part of how we, I think, do training. Yeah, I don't think I that, that that this this piece isn't stressed enough and a lot of agents will then like keep repeating themselves day to day and, and keep repeating themselves with every hire when you don't need to, right? You just have to create the process one time, get it down on paper or make a video or, or however you want to facilitate that. Mm -hmm. But why make yourself be the Google of the agency, right? Yeah. And I think too, like, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think we, yeah, do, doing the Zoom and saying, just watch me do this or let me, or I give you a list of things that's not time sensitive and saying, do these things, but you're not actually talking to, I'm not investing in a lead or a, at the time, like work yeah. some, you know, learn how to quote, learn how to talk to people separately. And then we add it all up and it all works out. Yeah. 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 So we all know it's important to keep the team motivated. What kind of things do you do to keep them going when it just becomes a grind? Uh, well, we, we just did something really fun. Like last, we we won like all state of Pinnacle Elite Award last as the last year. The whole team we went to the melting pot, and we Ooh. had a great time. Yeah, right. Do you guys have it there where you guys are? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, That's fun. Fun. Yeah, and so uh, we started doing like monthly team lunches. Uh, I have one person who works remotely that's super fun and that we're, you know, so we're like, when we're all together, let's have a lunch, let's do something. But we, we have contests here and there. Our, 
I don't know if it kind of work as much as really just doing, having some fun things to do together. I think that's what people like best. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what do you and do? Tambourines. Tam- we have tambourines are very important in our office. <laughs> I love that. Is that true dancing <laughs> at Bardi Gras? Yes. But also anytime, you never know, like something exciting, something we need to celebrate, good sale, you know. I love it. You're the first tambourine. <laughs> we, we, we're going to do. Uh, Woo! We have, yeah. Okay. Yes. Yes. <laughs> we have uh, the bells, the bells on our desks at work, which is fun. But like, I never thought about tambourine. It'd be fun to have a whole bunch of drums, right? Just, just a bunch of loud things. Yeah. I recently added a purse tambourine, which is obviously, <laughs> new, you know, because. People are like, you don't have your tambourine? And I was like, I don't. It's too big. And so I have a small one now. So I always have it. That's awesome. Oh. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. What are you doing for marketing? Marketing. Um, well, surprisingly enough, our biggest strategy is sales by party. So um, really, half of what we do is we get through referrals. And a lot of it is just creating relationships. But um, we do a lot of fun things. Like I take people to happy hour. A couple of weeks, a couple of years ago, we had a big event where I took everyone to Wolf Trap and we saw Lenny Kravitz. And so I invited all our referral partners. We went to a concert. We had a great time. So I think doing things that are fun and then people, you know, like, oh, me, Christine, she's my friend. She's in insurance. So I think that's, that's our biggest thing. I also do tons of mailings and things like that. But so I would say half and half, we do a lot of mailings and we get a lot of referrals. Hey, what are you still doing here? Well, while you're still here, and while it's fresh in your mind, check out live.teledudes.com. Yeah, if you weren't listening before, we took notes from over 100 interviews with top agents from around the country and made it into a live webcast. Using these strategies did help Craig and I write over $10 million in premium in the last couple of years. And let me tell you, on this call, you'll receive the exact blueprint to get the very same results. Again, that's live.teledudes.com to register for this upcoming Tuesday's live call with us. And if you jump on with us, we are certain 2022 will be an absolutely fantastic year for you. See you there.